I, I can't remember the year I was born in or how old I am, but I can remember when George Blake was superintendent of the Naval Academy. <laughs> I became interested in history in high school. It was my best subject. I went on to a very historic college in Williamsburg, Virginia. You couldn't help. You're surrounded by history there. Then I tried to get into the U.S. Navy, and they wouldn't have me. <laughs> I had a spot on a line. I had a bout with pneumonia my sophomore year at William & Mary. Then uh, soon after that, my dad said, well, you know, I'm on the local draft board, and your name is coming up fast. He said, I would highly recommend you volunteer for the draft. And of course, the Army will take anybody. <laughs> I really lucked out because I knew how to type. I was at first assigned to the infantry school and was getting all these reports from someplace called Vietnam. <laughs> and, and of course, they were all highly classified too. And I had no, I said, Sergeant Major, you know, I don't have a secret clearance. Shut up, keep working. <laughs> it's, it's in progress. <laughs> and then a buddy came over one day and he said, Sergeant Major, you owe me a favor. I need somebody that can type, headquarters, 2nd Infantry Division, and it was wonderful. We had the museum under us, and one day the major walked into my office and said, Chevers, you got a degree in history, do you mind taking over the museum? So I took over these two buildings and created a courtyard between them, moved two tanks into it, a big one and a little one, and completely redid the museum. And about a year later, Secretary of Defense McNamara announced that the name of the 2nd Division would be sent to Camp Casey, Korea, my whole museum had to be packed up and shipped to Korea. I didn't go with it because I was a short timer. So they sent me over to Main Post as curator of the U.S. Army Infantry Museum. I worked there as a civilian for a couple of years and then I actually applied for a job at the Center for Military History in Washington. And this was a backup interview. I saw this job advertised in Museum News, which was the professional journal. And I came over here, of course, and Annapolis is gorgeous. The wonderful thing about a college museum in particular is despite the things that aren't on exhibit, they're in reserve and we can pull them out real fast for faculty and students to use. We have a lot of fun with the chemistry department, the physics department. We found in the collection not long ago some painted flags, but they were on metal. And, and, and keeping paint on metal is not easy. And so we went over there and they analyzed them all with all their modern gadgets and stuff. And they've actually come over and looked at paintings with new equipment too and found other, you know, paintings underneath and stuff like that. That's always exciting. <laughs> and then of course, uh, graduation for about at least 40 some years. Public Affairs assigned me to WNAV radio station and I helped do background color for the live broadcast. I'd be willing to come back even in retirement if they want me. Um, uh, but I hope they do find somebody new <laughs> to bone up on the, uh, the academy. We need to break in some new folks. Hey, I've had a great time. I've worked for, what, 20 superintendents? And I will particularly miss the, the friends and folks I've worked with here over the years, many years. Oh boy, this place uh, has just been a wonderful, wonderful place to work. But I'm not, as I'm telling everybody around the yard, I'm not moving out of town. I'm in the phone book. <laughs> well, my message to encourage midshipmen to come to the museum would be, I think they would be very surprised at what we have over here. The museum is like an iceberg. You know, only a little bit of it is above water where you can see it. There are a lot of buried treasures here. <laughs>